welcome to Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today, by Mike Peters from The Alarm. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you could be on. I want to talk about some of your music. And um, you have a new album out. It is the Music Television album, which is a covers album, which is fun. It, you do covers of songs from the 80s, which people kind of lean towards you music-wise. Although you've been doing original music continually, like almost every year since then, like ridiculous amounts of original music. It's amazing, actually. Um, <laughs> like you are so prolific. Like I imagine by the end of this interview, you'll probably have a new album out and record it <laughs> in that short period of time. You are amazingly prolific. But <laughs> I, I want to hit upon the new album, um, the covers album, some of the song choices and the arrangements. It's really fun. It was, um, I think when an artist has cover songs, you never know what's going to happen because you don't know if they're going to interpret it as themselves, do a copy of it, or kind of do a mix. I think you do a little both on this album. I, I like your, you reinterpreted some stuff and some stuff you kept, you kept with it, which really makes for a fun album. When you went into it, did you have a game plan or did you kind of just hash the songs out as you wrote them and kind of felt out what sounded better to you? It was a really instinctive process. Uh, it was um, it was just a, a a thought that came into my mind that I should make a record that was honouring Generation MTV, where we come from, an era that bound us together to a lot of fans. And uh, I just thought of the the ten songs from MTV that I could think of in a second, and uh, <laughs> I already had Gene Loves Jezebel for Louis Sum and. Um, and uh, modern English down because I played with those guys, knew them, and I thought I could do a honor them through through this uh, record. But then I thought, oh yeah, Michael Jackson, you know, he, that's straight away what I think of MTV. Then I thought of Don't Change by In Excess because yep. that was the first band I ever saw on MTV when I switched on MTV in a hotel motel somewhere in the middle of America in the early 1980s when I first got to the USA. And uh, the image of them jumping out of their trailer or truck in a hangar it never left me and i loved the song i didn't even know the band were from i thought they were british or australia uh, american but they turned up from australia and america was being exposed to new music by mtv so it was a powerful channel and it connected us all and so it was really instinctive to do just choose the songs up straight off the top of my head i knew that video killed the rock and roll uh, Video Kill the Radio Star was the first song played on MTV in America in 1981, the same year The Alarm started. Money for Nothing was the first song ever played on MTV Europe in 1987. So they they were driving the choices I was making, if you like. And then some, I wanted to get radically away from the originals. And then some, you know, producer George Williams, who's worked on many of our albums, yeah. Uh, on our creative new albums he said to me with certainly with some songs like beat it by michael jackson i wasn't going to go da, 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 da. I think everyone knows that you know i was more interested in focusing on the line no one will be defeated because i thought that's an alarm lyric i need to own that part but george is like mike if you're going to do this song some of them you have to keep the crown jewels the the identifiers that connect those songs to billions of people. You have to keep right. some of them in. And I thought, okay, yeah. So let's strike a balance between the crown jewels and doing a pauper's version on an acoustic guitar. Well, it's, it's really interesting because you did do that. And I thought, like, I didn't expect for you to do, like, for Don't Change, it's pretty much, that actually is probably the more balanced version if you're doing some of you in the arrangement, but keeping to the epic of the song. But I mean, you are an epic songwriter. Everything you write is just, yeah, you know, it's very uplifting. Well, so yeah, the way that song builds, you yeah, kind of just take it and own it. Well, I, I try to, you know, if it's going to be me, I, I, I only know how to be me uh, in, in the way I, I am as, and the way I approach music. But um, I think you, I can learn a lot about myself in, in the music of music television, getting close to some of the songs that... I didn't really, you know, some, say In the Air Tonight is one where I've heard it a billion times. I don't need to hear it again necessarily. Uh, and, and But then sometimes I, I, it takes you by surprise. 
And and you you know I I, I heard it in a, a park in New York in Central Park. I was walking there with our load of our charity supporters after a big concert we played in New York, and the guy was playing it on his guitar, and we joined in. And I was like, I didn't even know what it was till he got to the chorus. And I was like, in the air tonight, stripped down like this. That's what a great song, and it, it surprised me. And uh, and I think that's what's uh, kind of nice about it because you know I think alarm fans out there are gonna say. What what's Mike Peters doing? Phil Collins? What's he doing? Michael Jackson for you know it's 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 like it's going to spike, and it's going to you know div, you know cause division and debate. And I think that's a good thing to have, right? Because they'll have to come to some of the conclusions I had to come to through the recording process. But but after the last album, Forwards, which was you know, I wrote that on my deathbed pretty much, and it was you know it was a, it was it was a record of me trying to get cling on to life and, and find a way back into the world from a very dark place. And, and I, I think the natural that well now now this record's out and and uh, and it's in the in the world and people are talking about it. I think it's a natural place for me to go to at the moment. I wanted to do something that was fun, something that was uh I didn't have to overly think too much right. about. It could just be instinctive. And um, which is how we came to the choices, and, and the, it, we recorded it really fast. I thought if you overthink some of these things, I'll walk away because yeah. we shouldn't be in this territory for some of it, but we are. So let's make the most of it, but let's get out fast and and let's make our mark on it and leave a mark on it and make it make it our own. And now when I play it back, it, I actually find it's quite a cohesive record. It's it's a great it record to put on in the background, and uh, some of it can be played live, you know, we'll play some of it live, not everything, because I don't want to turn the, the alarm into a covers band, you know, but yeah. but I think it's just, a, you know, I'm a big Bowie fan, and obviously I was inspired by pinups because I love that as the follow-up to Aladdin Sane. So the precedent's been set by some major artists, you know, Guns N' Roses have done a covers album, things like that. There's some precedents out there, and it's, a, it's, it's a, you know, I think some alarm fans will, will discover some tracks in here, like, Live Today, Love Tomorrow, which is a Blow Monkey song. Probably yeah. Not many people will know who they are. So you you go from the really well known, some quite obscure tracks. Even you know the when when I told Jay Aston I was doing Screaming for Everly, and he was going, "How did you discover that? You know that's really obscure." <laughs> and I, well, it's a great song, and you know because not not all the great songs are. are have gold discs on the wall to to right. to say they're great. You know my. Yeah. A lot of my favourite bands, you know, the world doesn't know who they are yet or didn't know who they were then. You know? So it's, um, you know, it, to me, music isn't about the gold disc and the sales. It's about what it does to you inside. Right. And that's always been my driving force as a musician is to make great music for people who listen to it, not just to sell on, you know, the Billboard Hot 100 chart, as good as that can be when you end up in there now and again. It's... Uh, you're right. A couple of songs I didn't know. I, I kind of knew who it was. Like, I knew the Blow Monkeys because I had Dr. Robert on uh, a while ago. But the, the other song I didn't know. And and I do agree. I think when I listen to the album, it is more cohesive the more I listen to it. Because at first, I was like, like beat it in the air tonight. We're really going to be staying on track. So I'm like, because those are iconic in a sound. Like it has a sonic sound that it no one, no one does it, a copy of it. I think I really, really, really appreciate it in the air tonight. Because like you, I'm like, I can't hear it anymore like i've heard it so many times i'm like how is he gonna do it but i think if you're a musician sometimes if you play a, a song i remember when i first started guitar and i played didn't want to hear hotel california ever again i heard it a million times and you play it once on guitar you're like oh that's kind of fun like the first time you reinterpret it it's like you re-see it differently through new eyes it makes it fun so absolutely yeah. it does because you know a lot of these songs are big for a reason that because they're great songs and you, you the, the the magnitude of what they've achieved obscures the fact that it's still a great song. And if, if you were right. in the room and heard Beat It for the very first time before it had been on a radio station, I knew they'd probably gone, oh, my God, what a song. It was same with In the Air Tonight. But yeah. we only hear it in terms of it's been 8 billion plays and it's in the top 200 stream songs of all time. But there's still beauty in those songs. And, and hopefully um, that when, by putting them in context of music television by the alarm, you, we can kind of go back to them again and think, appreciate them again for what they are, you know, because there is strength in all those songs. You know, when when In the Air Tonight is really a blues, it's a, 
it's a, a deep song lyrically and that it's obscured by its size. And, right. and when you when you strip down, beat it, it's a beautiful song. You know, no one wants to be defeated. I wanted to own that. I wish I so wish I could have written that lyric. <laughs> you've written enough just it. like it though. I mean, you've written, you've written a few of your own that are pretty good, so <laughs> you can let that one slide. Oh, thanks. Well, so actually melt with you. You you did a different um arrangement though. It's kind of fun, kind of not like a not like a pub or a club type tavern thing. It just has a different I don't know, it has a different feel to it. Like put a folk well, I, I, to be honest, I, we, I've toured in modern English many times over the years, right. from the early eighties to re- twenty nineteen. Last, I'm played with them in between, and um, I, I've seen them do "I'm Out with You" up close a lot of times, and I, and it's a song that I really love. Uh, but I thought I can't do it the same as them. You know, right. Robbie will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, no one's done it. I, I, I'd seen them on the last tour singing it on their own off the stage. The, the, we had some fans coming in for a pre-show acoustic environment yeah. before the main show started. And I saw Robbie and Gary and, and the band Mick and everyone playing it on an acoustic guitar. And I joined in with tambourine. I thought, it's, the reason why it's a great song is because it's, it's a, it, it's a folk song. It's a, you know, it's a ballad. It's a, it, it's a traditional piece of music that connects everybody. You could sing it in a pub, you know, I melt. It's, it's got that great chorus. Right. And I stop the and I could do it in a more of a folky environment. So I I thought, can it be played in three time? And I we thought, yes, it can. You know, so it's got more. I thought it took it more towards that world of that say Boston, you know, kind of vibe, Irish American, flogging Molly. You know that right? Um, okay, yeah. Dropkick Murphy type of styling. I thought you know Rose Tattoo. I thought it'd take it into that sort of environment because a, a good song can stand up in any environment. You know, right. you could you could do a reggae version of I Melt With You and it'll work. But I thought no one has done a folk version, so I'll have a go at that. And and it works great. I'm really, really, I love it. You know, he, well, the guys from, they said, well, they were said, no one's done it like this. Well done. <laughs> they were really. Uh, so you've gotten feedback? In that style. And, and how well. Yeah, from Rodden English. Yeah, they loved it. Yeah. Excellent. Any other bands give you, ask you, or give you feedback on, on their songs yet? I haven't had, I haven't had the, the, the balls to play um, Imagination to Baluey Sam yet. I'm going to have oh, to wait that's, that that's, that's good. You do, you all do that one good. Uh, yeah, but oh, the original's amazing. All the musicians, yeah. David Bowie's band on it, basically. You know, and I, right. I'm, I was a bit nervous about hoping to get the groove right, you know, because it's like, you know, it's some amazing players laying that original track down. Plus, it was my wife Jules's favourite song of all time. Uh, so I played the record up. a billion times at home. Yeah, so I thought, oh no. So I thought, I'm, I can't stray too far away from that one. But I tried to make it possible, you know, the Bluey Sun version is a real pop hit and a big mm-hmm. song. But I thought I'll try and... Imagine it that's on something like that's on David Bowie's Young Americans album or something like that. Right. I, I kind of tried to imagine it as something. It's it's and you funny you say your wife because like my wife is a huge fan of, of yours and growing up I listened to you but not as much as she did and she saw you when she was younger and then um so I got turned on to your music I knew some of your uh, your older albums and then in 2018 you guys came around to Boston which is you know a couple hours from me. So we went and saw you live, and that's where I became a bigger fan of you live, because you you really put on a show. So anybody right. out there, we're going to talk about. There's a tour coming up, we're touring anyway. Check them out. I mean, that really. I had to go back into all your other albums after that. I mean, phenomenal show. It was the one. It was Boston. I think it was for, it was for the Sigma tour. It was just so good, so good. Looking to oh, catch you with, uh, coming up. You know, right? In, uh, well, I'm looking forward to the tour because, yeah. Well, we're in Boston in um, June, I believe. Yeah, we get into, closer to me in Boston May, actually. Musical. You know, right, in right. May, at Toad's place, y'all are going to see a Toad's is closer to me, so I'm hoping to catch you there. And, and um, with yeah, my wife, we, we, we played there back in the early days. It's the same to club at Toad's place, and that we played there. <laughs> right, fantastic. Well, I remember one night we played there, probably about eighty-five. And it was so full, the venue, uh, and we yeah. couldn't get in the stage door. So we went round to the front and we said, you know, we're the band. Can you let us in? He went, 
you're not the band. No way. And we said, well, but look at the hair. And he goes, there's thousands of people with the same hair in there. You can't get away. <laughs> we had to get someone to go and get the manager to let us in the venue so we could get on stage. <laughs> That's funny. So people that don't know that, yeah, the, the uh, Toes Place is a fun down and dirty club. A little challenging if you're an artist trying to move through it because the setup and the layout is kind of kind of uh, intense. Oh, um, yeah. Just I'm looking forward stones, to that show. Stones played there once as well. I remember Maybe the big hubbub about that. Yeah, it's it's a legendary club, you know, and I'm glad it's still open. I'm glad it survived the uh, COVID. I think they did, they did a uh, documentary on it too, yeah. or what, they were doing one recently on the club itself because it was, you know, it's legendary. You, how are you feeling, like health wise? Because I mean, like I said, you you are you're feeling like end of days on your last album, and you look better than I do right now. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm good. I'm the beneficiary of all the advances in science to uh, benefit cancer patients like me with blood cancer. You know, I'm the beneficiary of the front line of that development. So I've got, I'm on these amazing cutting edge drugs. They've given me a life back. It means I can go on tour. I can, uh, you know, I only, uh, there's a break in the tour so I can come back for some immunoglobulin therapy. Um, but other than that, I carry my chemo on the road, take it every day. And, uh, and get on stage and live life normal as anybody else. I'm very happy to be alive. Excellent. I'm glad. I mean, you look great. And, uh, and actually, and you know, I know your wife has had her battles too. And she just, how's her tattoo? She just announced she was getting a tattoo. Um, yes, but closing off part of the journey, you know, just that, so when she looks at it. Yeah, that's yes, awesome. Yeah, well, she's just, uh, suffered brain, uh, breast cancer surgery. And, it, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really very tough process so hopefully this can uh cover up some of the scars and then you know when Jules sees herself in the mirror in the morning she's not reminded of it all the time yeah. she can help you see something like what she was before surgery and you know women have to keep that covered all the time so it's a it's a tough it's a gruesome journey for women to go through um breast cancer journey so um you know Jules mentors lots of people and um you know, share their journey. So hopefully she can inspire others to to not be as afraid of the situation and know there's a way back. Well, but both, and both of you have, though. I mean, the kudos to both of you. I mean, you, and you've, you've kept a positive attitude. I think you're saying that forwards was your, you know, you're, you know, you're in death's door right in the album. I mean, that's a pretty positive album. I mean, when David Bowie did his last album and he knew he was dying and you feel like, you know, you feel like compared that the attitude forwards is way more happier than you know what i'm saying it, it was still a very upbeat album for feeling <laughs> what you did you know what i mean yeah well i didn't pretty... i didn't die I didn't, I didn't die in the process <laughs> no but no but it was luckily it was, I'm i did it, but, it, but, no. but the album is so much more positive though it wasn't written like melancholy i mean the most melancholy you do ever is no. i think and, and it's my favorite thing is your harmonica the sound you do when you play harmonica has it is like <laughs> like it's like a melancholy bagpipe sound and sometimes harmonica doesn't can make or break a song. With you, it it it's such a sound where it always plays on the emotion, wherever key you're playing it in. You know, it's, yeah, I think it does. Yeah, it's like when you hear a harmonica, it's like hearing the wind when you're walking down the street. You know, it's part of it's a, it's a natural sound, and it's uh, you know, it's it's one of the earliest sounds in music. You know, and you think right. of those early bluegrass and blue the the, the you know, apart from the guitar, the harmonica was the next thing to come along to uh, add some colour to the music. And when, when we hear the harmonica, we're taken back to the those sort of primal music that's in all of us, that's inherent from when we're bit born and handed down to us through the DNA of humanity. Right. But, and sometimes harmonica can sound like a car crash, like a traffic jam. When you play it, you play it to the song, to the emotion, like it becomes something. It's not just a jam instrument. You very much <laughs> use it to the song. And not a lot of artists do that. No, they kind no. of just jam out to it. And sometimes it just and, kind of and, throws off the song. Unless, I'm, know? unless I've picked unless I've picked up the wrong moniker and I'm playing it on the on the <laughs> wrong song, and it's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a that, thing too. That, that car crash has happened a few times. Yeah. You grab it in the mid-song and you go, right, okay, well, no, it's the wrong one. <laughs> oh, that's funny yeah for people that don't know anything about harmonicas there's lots of different choices in, in, uh, in case you can get them in and they're <laughs> it can be a nightmare that's for an artist it. performing on stage to grab the wrong one in the oh. wrong key because you know it's not like a guitar that's where you it. can play the wrong note once play it twice it's on purpose you're not gonna hit that wrong note twice on a harmonica because yeah. it's just twice as bad you know 
You know, just, you know, as soon as you put your mouth up there and go, oh no, you might as well just uh, do something else while the harmonica part's going on instead. It, so it, let me ask you, so getting towards the end of this, the, the tour, how are you going to do the song list? Because, I mean, you have so many albums and you had this new album to promote and you just did, had forwards, which is a really yeah. great album, which I don't know if you really toured over here in the U.S. with, so... How are you going to do all these songs? Yes, yeah, you know, tough choice. Little I bit mean, of everything. Maybe don't play. This, don't play the same set twice. Uh, you know, keep things interesting, and um, you know. But again, I think, I think uh, it's this isn't the only tour we're ever going to do. So it's uh, there's plenty of tours to come uh, where we, you know, we'll come back just on our own, and maybe we, we can play longer in a different environment. So right. um, this is just a moment in time to celebrate and enjoy. Where we've come from, it's not often I look back through music. So this is a this is a definitely a throwback Thursday kind of record, and uh, and I'm kind of glad we're doing it because it's uh it's created a debate, and I think that's that's good, and it surprised people, and and uh, and it's been received really well. The idea of Generation MTV is is uh it's it's getting out there, and people thinking, hey, I want to go to that night. You know, it sounds like. That sounds like a night where I come from, you know. There's a lot of people that they weren't just connected through seeing the alarm, they were connected watching MTV. And we happened to be right. one of the bands that was on the video channel, just like in excess or Phil Collins or Michael Jackson. And uh, I think it's a good chance to uh, just come together uh, uh, and then uh, and have a great night. And I think I'd like to make our set quite celebratory and uh, and and uplifting because it's our first tour post pandemic post illness with me. And so I, I want to go out there and have a good time and, uh, you know, lift everybody up and say, look, the future's coming. Let's stay strong and uh, face it all together. Cause who knows what's around the corner. I agree. I mean, I just meant like, cause I know you have some hardcore fans or, or some people that only want to hear the hits that only know the hits are going to come. So it puts you in a spot and, 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 it, and you can't, you can't please everybody because what's the saying? You can't make everybody happy because you're not an ice cream truck. I think is the expression, yeah. you know, so no matter what you do, <laughs> it's going to, you know. Yeah. Well, that's why we have uh, events. We have an annual event every year called the gathering in Wales. And lots of people come from America yeah. and that's where we really stretch out. And across the weekend, you hear 90, a hundred songs sometimes, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty, in, 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 it's all in com- encompassing across the catalogue of the alarms career and it history. looks awesome it's, i um uh, i tell you and, uh, i've been with attempting to start leaning towards we've that myself them, we've held them in new york we had we've had two days in new york and they were fantastic and we looked at maybe doing one in uh, in massachusetts in the future and, uh, and there you go expanding the, the gathering and on this tour with um live today love tomorrow tour we also have these pre-show experiences as we call them and fans can come in early and um if they buy a ticket for it and they can hear some acoustic songs, make some requests, ask some questions. So it, it the, the, the show could be, um, it, it, it goes, it goes deeper if you want to go into that vibe, you know? And so, uh, that, that, cause that's, that's how we roll. And, uh, you know, we did it on the last tour in 2019 and, and it was, it was great fun being with a handful of people before the show and, asking questions, doing this kind of interview technique, playing, you know, what do you want to hear? Then yeah. you get to choose the song. And then you can play a few obscure ones in that environment. And then you can save all the big stuff for when you hit the main stage. The fact you have the energy to do two shows also is incredible. Your, you know, your energy <laughs> level and your voice well, hasn't changed. It's just as strong as, as it's always been. I mean, <laughs> I did it back to back. Well, the very first it. album to now, it's incredible. I've looked after it, you know. I've, I've worked, learned where to sing songs from in the best way, and uh, and um, you know, yeah, I, I, ironically, uh, right now because my blood count is is bang on norm, which I've never had in my whole life because these new Bravo. drugs. Congrats! Yeah, I'm singing better than ever. So uh, you know, that, which is great, and um, yeah, I've learned to sing lower in certain parts, higher in others, and balance out the um, the way my voice is uh, is called upon at gigs. And um, yeah, and I, I I really enjoy it. You know, I don't, don't just take it for granted. I'm always looking. I think uh, for the best way to sing the song, best part where it suits my voice best, and um, 
you know, discovered more about it as I've gone along. So, uh, and I think that's that's again because you know when, when I look at my friends, you too, and I think, well, when when was their last album? You know, well, I've made five since then. Yeah, <laughs> so, and I think you know, I think they'd like to be in that position. You know, when you're as big as you too, you can't make five albums in five years, and uh, that I think that's what they'd like to be doing. You know, because creativity yeah. is what drives them always. And we're lucky to have an outlet for that creativity because we're not constrained by the, the size of the wheel that has to turn around every time we right. want to make a record. So I'd love to see you I guys. Think you, I think you two should take the next tour. You guys should open for you two because it would be the perfect dream tour for fans. <laughs> be great, oh, my it? God. So, but I saw a Bono's one man show. I thought that was brilliant. I didn't go to Vegas, but you yeah, know, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. You know, I think that was, uh, I've heard good yeah, things about it too. But yeah, yeah you guys be great. Um, I want to thank you today. I just want to end on one thing. You have a great thing that you did, the Love Hope Strength Foundation, because I know we keep touching on cancer, but it's so important. We've all been affected by people in our lives by it. Obviously, you and, and all of us. Can you just touch on that? And I'm going to put the links, not only your your website underneath the show, but information for the uh for that foundation also that people can go to. Can you just touch on it for a yeah, second? Yeah, well. Yeah, Love Hope Strength. We we started in in um, two thousand and seven, and we've been running ever since. We we mission is to um, spread good word about cancer, show people that there's a way back for people who have blood cancer like me. That it, it doesn't have to be a life sentence when you hear the word cancer applied to your life. We take music to high places to shout the good message, the good news. Because when I was diagnosed, I went on the internet. All I could see was the medium term end of life stories and that i was desperate for somebody who had leukemia to say oh i've survived you know it was so hard to find and confusing because you know the internet we all know it. the bad yeah, stuff yeah. rises to the top first the good stuff gets buried down below and yep. um so we decided to let you know uh, we had met other survivors who had, had helped me with with their experiences and i thought let's share my experiences let's share jules experience let's create a stage to share people's experiences so that people can gain hope and strength from hearing them and so we've gone to a place like everest we're going this this june in the break in the tour we're going to spain we're hiking the el camino trail uh, we take lots of other musicians with us it's a uh, it's um you know music is a big part of the whole thing the therapy and uh, we raise lots of funds for cancer projects around the world we do bone marrow drives where we can to get people onto the bomo stem cell donor registry yeah. to save lives of people and uh yeah we, we put it out there as much as we can you know with all our supporters and our char charity website is lovehopestrength.org so we're easy yeah. to find and um you know lots of people from america come over to europe and we have events in europe on, and, and in america and so we're, we're um easy going charity sexy rock and roll cancer charity if, you, if there's <laughs> such a thing to say <laughs> you're the sexy cancer charity that's a good one to put that on a shirt yeah the sexy cancer charity <laughs> um well i want to thank you I well, thank that's you what rock and roll, wasn't it? Well, well yeah right <laughs> pleasure thanks um, thank yeah, you very much it. people Check out the links underneath. Is, we just scratched the surface. Uh, Man of the Camel Jack is a great movie, very inspirational. Check out the website. There's so much stuff on there. There's like, albums he's got, soul albums, band albums. Don't just stop it if you haven't heard all the, you know, everything else he's done. There's so much out there. Um, Thank you very Mike, much. Have a good day. And I hope I see you in a month or two. See you in Boston. Oh, okay. Thank see you, man. You. See you in New Haven. Bye -bye. See you in Boston. See you in America. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.